exalted today and forevermore in the precious name of jesus we gather to give you praise we gather to lift you high we gather to declare that you are god all by yourself thank you lord father we give you praise oh we worship you good morning everybody can we just begin to continue to lift up our voices thank daddy for this first sunday of 2018 Thank him for this first Sunday of 2018. Honor him, glorify him for this first Sunday of 2018. We have made it this far by the grace of God. Hope you can hear me. I'm not sure why I, I'm not able to be heard by Miss Sheila. If you can hear me, say I can hear you. Because this today that we have scheduled, you need to hear. Praise God. So if you need to log out and log back in, go ahead and do so. Father, we just want to thank you for this first Sunday. Thank you for your excess love towards us. Can we just use this Sunday to just say, Father, thank you. Before we do anything else, we thank you. How we begin a thing will matter how we go through the rest of it. So with all the other days left in the year, we use this first Sunday to say, Abba, we are grateful. Abba, we are grateful. We are honored that you will see fit to have us here this morning. We glorify you and we honor you because we know, Daddy, that indeed it is you that has brought us here. And it is you that will bring us to the beginning of the next year as well. In the name of Jesus, we cover our lives in the blood of Jesus. We cover for our children the blood of jesus throughout this year we are secured us and our tent by the hand of the living god in the name of jesus someone begin to thank him for the first of many sundays that you will experience in this year in the name i think i did a count yesterday 48 of them praise god not in one will you be found missing not in one will you be found dead not in one will you be found lacking not in one will you be found begging in the name of the lord jesus christ our Father, we bless your name. Take a moment and just honor the presence of the sweet Holy Spirit as we honor him and thank him for this journey that we are taking with him to know him more, to experience him more as the fullness of life that he is, as a healer, as a provider, as a strengthener, as a guide, as a helper, as a comforter, as a teacher, as a reminder, as the one that testifies of Jesus. In our lives, lift your voice and say, Spirit of God, we honor you this morning. 
We honor your name. Thank you because you have been commissioned to help me. You have been commissioned to guide me. You have been commissioned to protect me. You have been commissioned to walk with me and walk in me. And you keep your end of the bargain. You never quit your job. Lift up your voice and say, as I, as I make an intentional decision to walk with you in this month, my year is already better than it would have been. My year is already more blessed than it would have been. Better than any other year. Because now I possess the quickener on the inside of me. I walk with the relationship, with the love, with the quickener. With the spirit of God. With the spirit that leads me to all truth. With the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Lift up your voice and declare over yourself. By this spirit of God, this year I walk into all truth. I walk into all truth. I will know the truth and it has made me free in this year. In the name of Jesus. Everything that will cause me to choose an alternative. It will not happen this year. Because the spirit of God would open the eyes of my understanding. I will know what to choose. I will know what to say. I will know what to do. I will know which way to go. Oh, we give you praise. Begin to thank God. For this platform, just lift up your voice and say, Spirit of God, we thank you for what you are doing in this season, in this year in MCICF. Thank him for his undiluted word. Thank him for his undiluted presence. Thank him for making us a rare breed in our generation, even in this Facebook community, for setting us apart. For the wonders that he wants to do in every individual life. Lift up your voice and say, Father, we thank you for the testimonies, for the healings, for the, for the stories of your power and your grace and your love at work in us in the name of Jesus. We bless your name for the Arise Conference. We thank you for every other that will come across us in this year. Thank you for the expansion. We thank you for territories and gates being open to the fulfillment of your promise, oh God, for this platform. We give you praise for every life connected, every helper you've sent, every Every background helper you've sent, every team member you've sent, every contributor you've sent. Oh, we give you praise because indeed we are in our blessed year, our most blessed year, where we will flourish like those planted by the rivers of living water, where our 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 trees, our 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 leaves, all that concerns us will only flourish from glory to glory. There is no feeble among us, there is none that withers among us in the name of Jesus. In this year, we hear testimonies of continuous flourishing of us and our tent and our children, our spouses, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Come on, bless them for your year of flourishing as you remain planted in Christ, as you remain planted in the living water who is Christ himself, as you remain planted in him, you are strengthened with might on the inner man. Thank him because the season of your judgment is over. Your judgment has been revoked. Against you, it has been revoked. The hand of God has brought your victory in this year in the name of Jesus. Thank him in advance for the testimonies that we will share and rejoice in, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We honor your name. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We worship you. Lord, we commit today's time into your hands. We thank you because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that you are the same yesterday and forever. And I knew that you had this day planned even before the beginning of time. Therefore, we declare it sealed in the blood of Jesus. We declare it covered in the blood of Jesus. I want to thank you, Father, for the lives that you will impact, oh God, through the testimony of your daughter as it comes forth, oh God, not made by any man, but made by you. I thank you in advance for the deliverance that you have brought her to, oh God, for the place that you have brought her to, oh God, to be able to share that which you have helped her to overcome. I give you praise because as you have you have led her to MCICF by your instruction. I know now, oh God, that someone will be blessed. Someone will be empowered. Someone will be restored. Someone will go to their next and greater level of freedom in you as they walk with the God that they never knew in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We rebuke every distraction. We rebuke every attempt from the pit of hell to shorten the work that you are about to do this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. And we thank you, Father, because of this testimony today, someone will have a step closer to them being liberated and being free permanently in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you for all that will be shared, all that will be shared even in it as the testimony come forth, oh God, whatever it is that one is tackling and one is struggling with as they hear it from their sister, oh God Almighty. Thank you for bravery. Thank you for the impartation of the spirit of God that is in that conversation, oh God Almighty, that will pierce hearts and relief lives from bondages of such things in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We honor your name. We honor your name. We honor your name. Good morning, family. God bless us. I'm so grateful this morning that you all are able to join us. As I announced yesterday, it is a first of a kind morning crew. It took a lot of work. You know, the Lord helped me, you know, to get this together for us this morning and i really sincerely pray that it will bless somebody because god impressed upon my heart and I, i'm not sure who would remember there was a dream i shared i don't think i shared it on the platform but there was a dream i had um <laughs> that consisted fire and all these things and yesterday as i wrapped up and as i did the editing as i finished i knew that it was set for this moment I knew that it was set for this moment. Sister Mabinti, I don't know if you would remember that, but I knew somehow when I finally clicked the title of her book and that dream, I'm like, okay, God, because at the end of November, I couldn't make it to, I don't know this, um, this woman of God. Um, I've met, I had an opportunity to meet her once. I was invited somewhere to minister and she was there as a worshiper and we met then. Um, she told me briefly about the book and um, we didn't talk after that. I saw the launching and everything on Facebook. I didn't, I, I couldn't attend, but the Lord impressed upon my heart that her story must be heard by those who he has sent to this platform. Um, and it wasn't until after we finished yesterday, you know, the interview and I was working on the editing that it clicked. I said, God, you, you ordain things. You really do put things together. So I want your heart to be open. I want your heart to receive what she has to say. Um, hear her story, her story. That's all that matters is her story. Praise God. It's deep. It's hard to hear. It's hard to hear. I, I have the book. I could not get through the book. That's how hard it is. If we have our crew babies around, I want to ha have them to excuse us this morning. So crew babies, go play, go do something else. Go pray for mommy in the other room. Go pray for daddy in the other room. And let us hear what God has to say through this woman of God. So it's a pre-recorded, pre less than 12 hours ago, um, interview. It's about 35 minutes long. I want you to bear it. I'll be here listening along as well. Praise God. Um, her name is Minister Iatunde Cole. I should use this flyer instead. Praise God. She's out of New Jersey. And um, I'm excited to hear what God will help her to help someone come out of today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So we ready? We ready? We ready? We ready? Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the first of its kind morning crew, join me to hear a testimony of hope, love, and the power of forgiveness by the Holy Spirit from minister, author, and the girl who swallowed fire, Yatunde Cole, only on the morning crew tomorrow, Sunday, January 7, 2018, at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. Greetings. Hi, Yatunde. How I'm are well, you? woman of God. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy that you're able to join me. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Um, I'm grateful. How was your holiday, Christmas, New Year's, everything? Busy, busy, busy. And I am more delighted and honored that you um, asked me to come on. Thank you for the opportunity. And I hope your holiday was great. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. So just getting right to it. It's an international story that you have. It's a universal story that you have. So I'm excited to not only to hear about it firsthand from you, um, but also for the lives that it will impact. 
um, during this short time that we have with us Amen. today. So, first, why don't you tell me what Iatunde wow. means? Wow. Um, Iatunde means my mother came back. It's a Yoruba name. Oh. So, I don't know how I got a Yoruba name, but that's what it means. My mother came back. Because you are a native Sierra of... Leonian. Yeah. Sierra Leonean. As in my <laughs> <laughs> awesome place, yeah. right? <laughs> Sierra Leonean. So, you you're 100 yes. percent Sierra Leonean. Okay, cool. As am I. So awesome, Amen. awesome. So tell me about your your life. Tell me about some of the things that you touched in this book. I have it here with me: "The Girl Who Swallowed Fire." Yay! This is the book that has gotten. <laughs> you have your copy too. This is book that got. This is the book that got my attention Amen. as to who you were and got me curious. So tell us. What's in here, and then we'll go. Well, I am first of all, I'm so grateful, really, that I'm able to share to not just you. I know how your ministry blesses me personally, and it's blessed Mm -hmm. the entire world. Phenomenal what you're Mm -hmm. doing. So, my book, Mm -hmm. really, I have been obedient to God. Really, um, it was about six years ago that the Lord told me to write this book and to share my testimony for my testimony to help um, people around the world, really. My book comes from a place of intimacy. I write about um, being molested at a very young age when I was 14 and something that, an abuse that lasted for two years. And, um, And then coming to America and everything that happened after that as a result of the um, original act. So I write about the challenges that I faced. I write about being um, stereotyped by people who did not really know me or knew my story or knew what I was dealing with and why I was doing certain things. So it really digs deep into things that people really shy out of talking about, discussing in homes. And as, as you as an African and me and most people that are watching certain things we just don't talk about in the home and sexual education mm-hmm. is like one of them. So writing this book has been a challenge for me, but it's set me free and mostly yeah. to be obedient to what God has called me to do. Yeah. So if you were to give a synopsis of the testimony, mm-hmm. because the, 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 the word testimony, it often is defined or it can be defined as what God has done or the other side, getting to the other side mm-hmm. of it. So if you were to give a synopsis of the testimony, I know you spoke about things that happened when you moved to the yeah. U.S. as a result of what began in Sierra Leone. What age did you come to I was US? 18 when I came to the United States. So I started growing up, I should say. But at 18, when I came here, was when you know I started officially dating and doing grown-up stuff. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. Well, before before we go to that, let let's go back to the continent. <laughs> and um, so you were eighteen, so it was you were knowledgeable about what um had occurred, yes. uh, the violation, mm-hmm. right? And you you were saying it was molestation. Now I'm, you know, from as as we've spoken before, I get a little nervous touching around some things, but you've given me the clear that she, there's nothing hold, holding no, back not, in this, not at right? All. Okay. So what was that like for you? Let's let's cause I know how Sierra Leone is not, and I've been there um and I know what that environment is mm-hmm. like. Um at the time of the violation, was it something that you reported, you said something to somebody, what could have been done or what was done? Well, at the time that it the first time that it started, the violator is what I call him in the book, he threatened me and what he said was, If you tell anyone, I will kill you. And I literally took him at his word because this is someone who grew up in our home as a big brother. My parents took him in after his parents had died. And so he grew up with us and he had a a voice in our home that was stronger than us even who um, was the children of my parents. So the moment he told me the first time it happened that if you tell anyone, I would kill you, I believed him. So I had like no room, no window to tell anyone. I was very terrified of him. And within the two year period that he was doing it, this was something that was happening maybe two or three times a week. It depend on what his mood was. It depend on how he was feeling. Like no, I don't think he ever cared 
you know, if I was having a good day, if I was having a bad day, all he wanted to do mm. at the time was just satisfy himself. And it was something that was very, very challenging for me. So the moment it happened the first time, which I thought was going to be the only time, I completely shut down and I was just doing whatever he wanted me to do. And I, I did not really descriptively write the things that were done to me, but there were major things that were done to me that I, I would not even wish it on if I ever, if I had a, an enemy, I would not wish it on an enemy, but he took a lot of me. Like he took, he took my life really at the time away from me. And it took me over 20 years really to regain my life back, to confidently sit now and even have this interview with you or even write about it. Because once I shut down, my life was never the same. In fact, my life will never be the same, even though I am healed, but my life will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's been a challenging um, journey, but God as always is faithful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Girl. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. I, I, mm, okay. So when you came to US mm -hmm. at eighteen, I can I can suspect that there was some psychological remnants there that affected the way in which, as you said to me, you started acting out or acting or just right. living. So from what you mm -hmm. knew. So talk about So when that. I came to the US, of course I was I I had left that part of me behind. And I did not know psychologically that this was affecting my life it was it was like something you put like in the back burner like we say here you i forgot about it not totally i knew it was there but it was not until i was in my first sexual relationship in the united states where that whole thing tr triggered you know it was the person who i was dating um and something happened you know that triggered that memory it was like when something was done to you that was already done in the past and once it triggered it it was like all hell broke loose then and that's when i realized oh my god this happened and this is the effect it had on me and i was never the same during my life in the united states so many things i was involved in so many things i had no business involving and the the thing about it is I have always kept everything quiet. I am someone who, when I deal with something, I completely shut down. My family would not even know, even the closest person to me would not know what I'm dealing with. So the whole time I was going through um, what I was dealing with, with this guy in Sierra Leone, and I was in, a, in an abusive relationship here with a, a man, and it was really a horrible time for my life um, when I was just out there. It was like, going through sexual abuse and then having someone who I thought was to protect me as a boyfriend never protected me. And I was dealing with physical abuse from him, emotional abuse, verbal abuse. Um, I went through um, pregnancies that I had to have abortions. It was so much going on. I was involved in drugs and alcohol and I tried women. It was just too much happening. And I did not know where to turn to. My life was just really going down the drain. I was definitely, I knew for sure, if God had not intervened and connected me with people, I was going to die. There was no in-between. So this was when you now came to the state and all these other things were added to yeah. it. Physical abuse, mm -hmm. drug use, lesbianism. Yeah. Um, or attempt of yeah. it, and they were yeah. added. And but a part of you knew, correct me if I'm wrong, that you needed out of oh, all yeah. those things. Oh yeah, every the thing about it is because I I was introduced to Christ when I was in Sierra Leone, which was really like one of the best things. Every act that I was doing, I just I knew within myself this was wrong. I knew I had no business getting into everything I got into, but I was crying so much for help. And I was seeking for help in all the wrong places. So let me mm -hmm. ask you this then. How is it that, and, and I'm asking just from your perspective, yeah. because I've been there and mm -hmm. I know when you are in mm -hmm. Christ and you say you love mm -hmm. the Lord, but you are, 
you are doing something where consciously you know this is not mm -hmm. of him this is not what he would have me do i already know him i know better yeah. than this but in that moment you are pleasing yourself or in that moment you are just acting grown or acting mm -hmm. tough what happens to the mind of that kind of person for you? i think for me my i had the subconscious guilty conscience but my mind was mm -hmm. not there i think i had literally in in so many ways lost my mind in between everything i was doing again guilt was there all the time um i would get into sexual um acts and i would feel guilty and then i would get back on my knees oh god forgive me you know and then back again but because my mind had been so shut down and it was like god was not doing what i thought god was supposed to do for me which is to save me it I, I used to think well god if you wanted me to stop doing this you have to literally make me stop doing this when i was the problem you know so mind had was gone i was not thinking really straight i was so hurt and so depressed where i was completely gone but you wouldn't know because i wore this mask where you thought my life was just perfect so yeah mm. so you were smiling all to the people. time just looking me, happy all the time you would never wow. me on an off day because i was i was doing i think i worked harder at hiding my true self mm -hmm. than even being who i was okay so, so how started, did you get to the go ahead go, go ahead. ahead so i was gonna say how did you get to the place then where you um where you're saying God and nothing else, where you dropped everything else and you stopped the, because I know you're at that place now where you stop the um, compromising, mm -hmm. where, you know, compromising by compromising, I mean, still loving God and still dabbing a little bit. How did you get to that place where you said enough? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be held with guilty conscience any longer. I'm not going to be coming back and saying, Father, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be taking grace for granted. Yeah. How did you get to that place after all that? Uh, because that's, you went through a lot. Oh, my gosh. I think it was, it started in 2006. I was with someone who um, was not a man. And I came to a point where someone else was reminding me of who God was. And it was just one day, I just made a phone call to this individual. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just done. I said, I'm tired. I really want to get back to the church. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, there was a, a, a pastor who had come from England. And he started a ministry here um, in New Jersey. And once he started his ministry, I got involved right away. That was the only thing that really could keep me off yeah. of going back to saying okay i'm gonna compromise and of course between 2006 until a couple of years ago of course i went back back and forth but i was more into okay god i trust you and i know that you are pulling me away from this so it was between that time i said okay enough is enough because my life was going to a place again where i knew if i had not stopped or god had not intervened i was i was really going for death very very fast so tell me about that near-death experience was there one yes there are times when i have attempted um to kill myself uh, my best friend who is in florida thank god for her she knew because i had told her a couple of times where i said i really just want to kill myself i said my life is not going anywhere there are times when as i as i write in the book where i would take you know, alcoholic beverage in my bedroom. And then I would mix it with the prescription painkillers that I was um, addicted to. And I would just lay in my bed. And for an entire night or whatever day, I would not even know what's happening with me. I would just lay there. And then nobody knew because I have this habit of once I'm in my bedroom, I lock my door. So you can't disturb me. My phone is down. But those are times when I'm really in a, in a season where after even breaking up with my boyfriend and I was going through just heartbreaks, just disappointment with men, just, and, and certain other issues were happening. My life was just, it was just at a standpoint. So the best thing I needed to do was, I'm just going to take these pills. I'm just going to drink this, bev this alcoholic beverage, and I'm just going to die. Whether I wake up or not, I just didn't care. So what stopped you from doing it? From um, going? God, 
God Amen. connected me with someone who um, became my spiritual mom now in my, my current church, who started coming <coughs> to my old church to teach music. So she started coming and we connected where I later found out she was a Christian counselor. So I started going mm. to her for some reason. One day I was in such a, in a, in a bad place and I saw her card and I said, I need to call this lady. So I called her up and I started going for counseling and it, it took a, a long time for her to even break me because I couldn't even trust her. But I believe that if I had not met her at the time I did, definitely my life would, I would not even miss, be sitting here talking to you. And as hard as that is to even comprehend for even myself, I knew that's what was going to happen to me. Yeah. Mm. Well, praise God that you encountered somebody like that, that in your life. Right. Now, one other thing that I, I'm familiar with, I remember the first day that I mm -hmm. met you, we had an opportunity to minister on the same platform. You're an awesome Bless worshiper. God. And um, I remember you gave the testimony about your mm -hmm. heart condition. So in the midst of all of mm. this, um, let me say, with the exception of the things that we we talked about that happened to you in Sierra Leone. I think every other one I would define, you know, out my umbrella will probably look at things that we walked ourselves into. But of course, they started as a result of something yes. that was not quite right, you know, um, emotionally, yeah. you know, something that had been robbed from you when you had no, no, no way to decide whether it should be taken or not. Mm -hmm. But amidst all that, there was a health condition. Yeah. Now, that was the testimony that really got. <laughs> my my attention I assume they are honestly <laughs> would t have to tell you that and I know you're all covered up today but you actually have evidence yeah. of it um you know you're not proud to hide no. it. you know sorry you're not you're not too proud to show no, it you know you, you don't cover it intentionally so tell me about so that so when I was born in Sierra Leone when I was two uh, my mom tells me the story later on she said when I was two the doctors told her and my dad that I had a hole in my heart I was born with a heart murmur so they needed to raise money to um, bring me either to the United States or um, England for the surgery. And the doctor had told them that I will not pass my second birthday. I was going to die. So as God will have it, he kept me. Um, mm. All those years I was in Sierra Leone. I grew, I was, when I grew up, I was lazy. I was tired. But they just thought I was a lazy person. But my heart was overworking itself. Mm. Um, the United States. My... Um, I went to the doctor two years after I came. And when I went to the doctor, um, the doctor did all the tests. And long story short, he said, he looked at me. He said, why are you alive? And I said, yeah. Mm. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, the way your heart is, you could have dropped dead any time and died. And I was like, wow. So we had to, in 99, I did my, my first heart surgery. And I was doing well until um, 2014. I had to have a second heart um, operation because my heart was doing all sorts of things it had no business doing. Um, and mm. then 2016, I had to have a third heart operation. And even going to have the third um, surgery, my doctor said to me, you know, um, I couldn't find what, how to fix your heart. And she said to me, and I don't want to. This is two yeah, years ago. This is two years ago. And that was a 12 wow. hour surgery. Both of them, yeah. Wow. So the doctor said to me, um, and I don't want to do any more surgery. And I said, you know, and I don't need any more. And I've, I've always believed in I'm already healed because Christ died on the cross. Right. If anything, That's I could right. have been dead when I was two. But I grew up with this problem, right. with this issue, and I stand on my healing. So I thank God because I know I have a purpose. You know, we all have purpose. Mm -hmm. We all have destiny. And if it had not mm -hmm. been for the hand of God upon my life, Having heart surgery, when I was back home in primary school, I had a friend who died because she had a hole in her heart. And at the time, I didn't even know I was dealing with the same thing because, again, it was just when I was two. I didn't know the story until we came to America. So God saved me. And among, among that, so many other health challenges I've had. And I just know that when you have a purpose in your life, when, when God has his hand upon you, so many things come to fight against you. And the heart issue was yeah. one of the major things that I had to deal with. And times when I know I cannot even wake up in the morning, my heart works itself so much that I just have to lay down for days and shut down because my body tells me you have to shut down. But God has been, wow. God has been amazing. 
That's been yes. good. So I, I'm so <laughs> glad that you're alive. That is good. <laughs> um, to be able to share this with us today. I'm really glad that you're alive and I bless God for all the ways, you know, this morning, um, in the morning crew, we were speaking about um, the interference of God in our lives at times where we don't even know how to invite him in. We're so jacked up and so messed up. Sometimes we don't even have the strength to pray and say, Father, come mm -hmm. in. But in his love and in his mercy, he chooses to just interfere in our lives to keep us alive to get us through whatever we need to get through so that we can be testimonies for him. And I feel like you're one of those stories of where God just interrupted your flow Amen. and um, to keep you to have a story to Amen. tell. So why the book? I didn't choose to write this book. If it was me, no way. But the Lord had has healed me. And mm -hmm. I remember six years ago when the Lord said to me, I want you to share your testimony. And I really did say to the Lord, no. So every year, I'm telling you, when you have a purpose in your life, this is so important. When God gives you an assignment, you must do it. I saw how my life went six years ago. Every year, there was a stagnant in my life. And I saw how every end of the year, the Lord would tell, remind me, write the book, write the book, write the book. And, the, and mm. the last time before, when I finally said, okay, to God, I remember we were at my church, New Year's Eve service, and the pastor did an altar call. So when I went up for the altar call, I was just laid down on the floor, and I began to feel this pain in my belly, and I could not understand what this pain was. And in my ear, I could hear the Lord say to me, this pain you're feeling, this is the pain women, children, men that have gone through what you have gone through are feeling. And until you become obedient to me, this is what would happen to you. And I just lay there and I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so I went to Sierra Leone last year and coming back on the plane, the Lord said, this is the season for you to write the book and watch what I'll do. Amen. So Amen. I became obedient to God the reason really for this book is because I want my book to be a voice there are so Amen. many people that have read this book that have called me woman of God I'm telling you that have called me that have been crying on the phone just now before I came in here to um, do this with you someone is reading my book outside and I looked at her and she's crying and I was like I'm sorry I didn't really write for you to cry she said, you have no idea how I can relate. So people have been calling me and telling me I went through the same thing. A friend of mine said to me, my cousins put rag in my mouth and they were raping me. And so this book is helping me. People have been dealing with molestation, with rape, with so much for so many years. Our people, for exam, most especially, and they can't even talk about it. So I stood up and I and and with God on my side behind in front of me and everything <laughs> I wrote this book. And and I'm proud girl, of you and I'm glad that you did. If I tell you there are, there have been there have been a lot of challenges. When people call me that have been reading this and telling me their experiences, I'm able to cry with them on the phone. I'm able to pray with them on the phone. I'm able to just listen. Sometimes I just hold the phone. I let them just cry. And when they're done, we talk. I'm able to pray with them and say, if mm -hmm. you need further help, please call me. If you, whatever you need, because I can relate to someone who has been through that. I think one of the things that, you know, even for the person, the woman or the man mm -hmm. who, whether it's a molestation or abuse story or rape story or domestic violence story or suicide attempt story, all mm -hmm. of which you went mm -hmm. through or a medical condition story, whether it's any of those, I think reading your book, even if they never pick up a pen to write their own story, there's a level of release that comes to know that they are not alone. Yes. And I think if there's nothing else, I, I totally commend you for doing that. I saw something in here that I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. about. You said, um, you said my community, my village stopped raising mm -hmm. me. Instead, they were burying me deep in the ground alive. Mm -hmm. 
The ground was closing in on me. The elevator became darker. The call for help had disappeared, and I swallowed pain. The mothers were talking about mm -hmm. me. Now, how does that feel when the community mm. stops raising you? Because being, being West African, mm. there's one thing we know. We, we, I learned it about Africa when I came here that it takes a village to raise a child. I don't think it's really a saying that we had in Sierra Leone, but it is yes. true. And in our communities all around North America, we see that, that, that village type of thing. But when the village is against you, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something, you know, and I've been there yeah. too. So when I saw this sentence, I, I, that's what I thought. When the whole village turns against you, it's almost like isolation, <laughs> it's, you know. So tell me about that. I assume this was in New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when um, I was dating this guy who... Um, I'm talking about this is the one with the abuse. So when I broke up with him, mm -hmm. so I, when I broke up with him, he, I don't know how he found out or whatever that I was involved with women. So he took my name in the entire New Jersey community. I would go to parties even with my female cousins or female friends. And people began pointing fingers at me. People began to say to me, that's the girl, that's the lesbian girl, that's the one who does not want to be with a man. So in my own ignorance, I had no idea. You know how when we were out there back in the world, I'm someone who loved to dance. So when I was in the world, I didn't care who I went out with. As long as I'm out with my girlfriends or whatever, I have fun. So the community started talking about me. I would go to parties, and if I'm walking, I would see mothers just scratching themselves. That's the girl they were talking about. That's the, the girl who's a lesbian. That's the this. And then mothers started telling their children not to be friends with me because if they are friends with me, they will associate them with me. At the end of this chapter, you spoke about the realization that you came to, you said there was a time where you thought you were born mm -hmm. that way because there was so much rumors yeah. about it concerning you that you just felt like you should maybe accept mm -hmm. it. But then you got to the point where you, you know, you, you said, you said that was the, I realized that no one was born gay mm -hmm. or lesbian. It's a spirit that grabs a hold of people mm -hmm. controlling their thoughts and causing them to think yeah. otherwise. And you said, like my story, there are a lot of people who have been through so much with the opposite sex. And because of their tragic experiences, they are desperately seeking attention. And sometimes, I mean, in your case, that's what drew yes. you um, to, what, to what had happened. So how did you turn away from that? I realized again, like I wrote, I think I said one morning when I woke up, I had this conversation. You know how they have this picture of the devil here and then the devil here and where the enemy was saying, but this is how you are. And God was reminding me of his word that he created man mm -hmm. in his image, you know. He said, for this reason, man would leave and, and cleave to his wife and the two would become one. God reminded me of that. And, and I realized mm -hmm. I am not a lesbian, you know. I am a woman who is hurt. I am a mad black woman, so to speak, you know. I'm a woman who mm -hmm. has been through so much. And I, I gravitated to... Um, the same sex, because at the time, this is what gave me comfort. This is what was, was meeting my emotional need. But then I knew, I again, with every sin and everything that I was doing outside of God, I knew I had no business doing it. And so when I stopped it, it was like an instant. I stopped and never again was attracted to the same sex. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So in writing this book, I can just assume in your family, you bumped your heads with several people who did not want you to tell the true story. I know you ch probably changed some names and stuff for for people's privacy, but you told your story mm -hmm. and people were still offended by you telling yours. As I can imagine, <sighs> if I tell mine, some people, you know, there's some people who are saying they're waiting for certain people to probably die before they write their stories. But you told yours while I'm assuming... 95% of the parties are still alive. So briefly, what are some of the kind of backlashes that you got <laughs> from your own home? That's a touchy subject, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have no, no, to no, go okay. there if you don't want so, to. So um, with my family, I would just say this, that a lot of them really did not know. The only people who really know about this abuse are my parents. And... 
everyone else now, as I am aware of, they are upset because there's one of my book in my family in Sierra Leone. They, they took, my aunt took one book with her and they've been sharing it. And all they say, oh. and they say to each other, just read chapter two, just read chapter two. And then, and then they're, they're, uh -oh. <laughs> they're raising up this war because again, this guy who did this to me, he's um, still in the family. He is a part of us. Mm. He's, we see him all the time when I was home and say, every time I go mm. home, he comes to the house um, to visit. So, wow. but some of them, like my cousins, my, my uncles back home, they are outrightly upset. And what we found out when this whole thing happened, two of my cousins said that he made an attempt to molest them. Yeah. Mm. So I would just say there's just maybe just one, per not maybe, there's just one person who I'm going through really major issues with, with my book. And it's a major person in my life that I'm disappointed mm. at this person's reaction because I was expecting something else that this person would really embrace me and say, number one, I'm proud of you. And number two, I see the hurt and what can we do to move forward? So... Mm. 90% of my family, they're, they're okay. They're, they're, some of them are just in between. And then the rest are like, why did you write this? So we'll see how it mm -hmm. goes. And I believe God, he's going to work <laughs> everything out. But I Amen. have they absolutely will. no regrets that I wrote this. Amen. Yeah. And, um, well, you know, this month of January in the morning crew, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And we're, mm. we're reading a book by Pastor Robert Morris. And the book is called The God I Never Knew. My God. And um, he spoke about how he came to the knowledge of the Holy Spirit as the God that he never knew, but he, he was God. So I put that question to you, Yatunde, with everything that you've been mm. through, this powerful testimony. Because to be able to come, come up with it in a, let me see, 145-page book, <laughs> thereabout is a testimony in mm. itself to not be afraid to do it, to not care about telling your story, to using it as a, as a, as a platform of your release mm. and your freedom to use it as a symbol of your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to, we're going to get to that. What have you learned about the God? What have you learned that was new about God <laughs> from this journey? Cause I know one thing is that you wrote this book. God gave you the instruction, I believe in January or mm -hmm. you started and it was, Everything was done in 2017 yes. from execution to the launch in November. Yes. So just tell me maybe two things that you learned about God that you never um, knew until you did this. One thing I learned that is I live by every day. I learned the power of prayer. Prayer changes everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. If I did not learn anything, prayer and I supported my prayer with faith because see, we could pray mm -hmm. all the time, but if we do not have that faith as the Bible speaks about, our prayer is not even doing anything. I right. learned how to pray and I back it up with faith. When I started writing this book, you have no idea how much I had nothing really Mm. I was just obedient. I prayed. I said, God, this is what you've asked me to do. The moment I was done writing the book, I put it down and I said, God, the book is done. And I prayed mm. and I said, you will connect me with the people that mm. will help me. God connected me with a publisher who to this day, I've never met this man. This man mm. is out of um, Ghana. And he has a publishing company. The moment he read my manuscript, he said to me, I want to help you because your story is so powerful. I'm going to help you. You don't even have to give me anything right now. When, you're, when I'm done, when you start making money, you pay me. Prayer wow. changed that. Because again, I yeah, had man. nothing. When we did the book, That's he published funny. everything. To do the book launching, same thing. I said, God... Everything is in your hand. And God, I got a haul. I mean, people, you've seen the pictures and maybe a few videos. People surrounded me. Why? Because I had faith in God. I, I embraced God and the Holy Spirit. Oh, my gosh. He is such an amazing person. God, you know, people, yes, oh, man, 
I, <laughs> I get like goosebumps when you were asking me the questions. You know, my body was just filled with the Holy Spirit. It was like God just like, you know, got up from his throne and said, I'm right here. He I'm is here. Oh my gosh, he's such an amazing yeah. God. When people understand who the Holy Spirit is, when people understand that God is for us and he's never against us, everything will work out to his glory. My life has Amen. not been the same since this book has come out. It has it Amen. has not been the same. And if it wasn't for my faith in God, if it wasn't for prayer, if it wasn't for the grace of God that is upon my life, there's nothing else I would have done. Like, I have nothing else. I have no one else but the Holy Spirit, but God, who but is with Spirit. me. Nothing. Who is with me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And how did he help you to forgive you today? Ooh. Because I asked that before, the Lord laid it on my heart, she should be interviewed on the morning yeah, too. Thank you. Knowing that God is always right, I still wanted to know, have you forgiven? And I asked you that and you told me yes. So why did you forgive? Did writing the book help you forgive? Did you forgive before you wrote the book? What what's your forgiveness walk like? Concern I had to forgive before I write. So the only way I was able to forgive, mm. number one, I had to go through a series of counseling sessions. I had to literally sit and say, number one, to this man who had molested me, I had to say I forgive him. And if, it, if God had not healed me, you know, I write toward the end of the book, I said, the fact that I was molested is never going to change. The fact that I was involved in so many things that we've talked about is never going to change. So the only thing I could do was to forgive for myself because I realized how much forgiveness, unforgiveness had taken so much hold upon my life. I realized how unforgiveness was causing me unnecessary illnesses. I realized how unforgiveness mm -hmm. was, was even putting me in a depressed place. I was severely depressed, severely. Mm. Um, and it was all because of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, and blaming everyone else but myself, you know, for everything mm. that was going on. So mm. God really worked with me through going through, I'm telling you, series of counseling, series, series of counseling wow. that broke. There's, there was yokes that had to be broken in order for me to be free. And the freedom that I have now in Christ causes me to even sit here. And have this interview with you. So that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, what would you say to that young person or older person who has a story? Doesn't have to be anything mm -hmm. like yours, but they're they are hating someone else because of it. They are depressed because as a result of the story, and they've not been able to share mm -hmm. it. It's a it's a it's a personal walk. It's a depressed mm -hmm. walk. I mean, I've been there. You First know. of all, I would say to the person, whether a man, a woman, a child, um, that we win. Number one, I'm yes, sitting here and I'm talking. And again, it has not been easy for me to talk about this. But I would say to you, your life is not a failure. We are winners in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will give you will connect you connection to the right person because one of the things that really messed me up in my process of really trying to release this i shared some of my life story with the wrong people and when i did that they took it and ran with it in a negative way so my prayer mm. for the person who's looking who's who's <laughs> trying to say well i went through this well how will i get over we can pray all we want, but until sometimes we need to literally sit down and talk to someone about it. So I'm praying that God connects you with the person this year, before the end of this year, God connects you with the right person that will hold your hand and cry with you and say, release it. It is safe. You are in a safe place. I pray that God connects everyone who has dealt with anything similar to what I've dealt with, that God connects you with the right person, that you allow the person of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit to heal you, that you find a place mm -hmm. where you would say, I forgive. 
I forgive mm. for what you have done to me. Mm. That you would look back over your life and, and see how unforgiveness has caused um, so much trauma, so much unnecessary things that we should not even be dealing with. That That's is my right. prayer, that That's God right. connects you with the right person, that the Holy Spirit will even come and just love on you like never before, and that we totally mm. just lay it at his feet and say, God, it is in your hand. Because guess what? God says he will fight for us. And this guy who did this to me and everyone else that has hurt me, I have seen their lives. Some of them I have seen how their lives have ended, all because I released it to God, all because I forgave. I, I don't swear. I don't say, oh, God will do this to you. This No, I just say, God, I forgive. And I try to love. This guy who did this to me, as much as I don't want to love him, I must love him because he is a child of God. He is a Muslim right now, but if he stands up and say, God, forgive me, and he becomes a Christian, he's my brother in Christ. So I had That's to learn right. to look at him and everyone else that has hurt me in a, in a positive way. And, that's how, and that's, mm. how we, that's how we attack as Christians. If anybody wants to talk, I'm here because I know what you're dealing with. I can relate to the pain of having somebody take advantage of you when you don't want it, when you're saying no, you're literally laying there and someone is touching you in a place, in a way they have no business touching you. You're, you're sitting there when someone is punching you in the face and you put on a makeup just to cover it because you can't even tell someone what you're dealing with. We are here for each other. We are in a place and a time and a season. And in this year, God is healing. God uh. is peeling back every hurt. God is peeling back every pain, and we are moving forward in Christ because we all have an assignment. All of us. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, sorry, we do. I got emotional there. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's fine. That's perfectly yeah. fine. You know, I'm so I'm I'm really really honored to have you. I'm really, I mean, I'm sitting here watching you. I'm like, this girl really just she did it. You have just proven to the world that you can let go. Years later, you still can. Even almost at the brink of taking your own life, you can still mm -hmm. forgive, forget, drop, and mm -hmm. let go so that you can be a ministry, so that you can be a movement to show people what God is really able to do in his healing ability. Mm -hmm. So I'm extremely proud of you, and I personally told you, you're an example mm -hmm. to me. You're an encouragement for me, you know, and... Um, <laughs> Oh my God! Wow. God is amazing. God is 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 such an amazing God. If it had not been for God, I thank God for you. It's a topic that matters, especially being from the nation that mm -hmm. we are from. It's important because it's such a no no. Yeah. It's such a thing that nobody can talk about. It's such a thing that it's it's pushed under mm -hmm. the rug, and victims are um are you know are made a further victimized you know even in their mm -hmm. own families i've seen it more than enough and I'm, i've heard it from you so it's and i pray for you that god through this book will help to make you a voice for the kind of change that every Amen. victim wants to see in Amen. sierra leone i pray that god will use this book and use your ministry to to penetrate and make a level of change in sierra leone for young girls mm. that are now mm. where you once mm. were amen you know um so to god be the glory how can we find <laughs> that book so you can go on amazon um dot com and you can type the girl who swallowed Ooh, fire and it's on amazon yeah. but if you want a personal copy from me um i'm on facebook um air tunde call or we have a facebook page the girl who swallowed fire you can inbox me and i will send you um a personal signed copy if you would like i am excited and once again to really share the story once again woman of god for this opportunity you have blessed me in so many let me tell you i am so proud no, of what you're don't doing tell me. <laughs> you listen <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I am. I talk oh, about you. You have no idea you, how much I talk about you because even thank you, God. I can't wait really to read your book. And even you have stood out. You have in this morning crew mm. and what you do. It's, you know, I'm proud that we're doing something positive. We're doing something positive mm -hmm. for our people mm -hmm. and we're stepping out in faith and saying, God, this is what you asked me to do. Here it is. And, I'm gonna do it. No turning back. Nope. 
gonna do it with everything within me. And um, Amen. It is what it is, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. So I want to bless God for your obedience to write the girl who swallowed fire. Such a powerful. You you never got to why it's titled that. Tell me quickly, two seconds. Why is it titled that? Okay, so my publisher and I we came up with that name because when he was reading it, he was like, it was like you swallowed so many fires, so much, so so much. much. So it was like just smoke that was just choking you. It's like in Sierra Leone where it says you swallow yes. two feet. So, that, so you take really that's months. how we came up with it. You go ahead and just say a prayer for our viewers that are you know, that are relating with mm-hmm. you. Right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. God, you are such an awesome and amazing God. Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for your children, God, that are watching this right now, God, that are listening, that have been through, Father, some, if not even worse, that I have been through, that that what we're sharing today, God. I speak your healing over their heart, over their lives, God, that this this moment, God, this time has encouraged them, God, and given them a reason to live and given them a hope, God, for the future and encouraging mm-hmm. them to know that with you, everything is possible, God. And if you Hallelujah. have kept us this time, God, onto this moment, God, you will keep on keeping us, God. And God, we will release Amen. anger, we will release pain, we will release depression, God, that this year will be a year that we walk away from everything that we have been dealing with, God. And we stand up tall, God. We stand up strong as men and women of God that will glorify your name, that our our life will be a testimony. Our lives will be testimony that you're opening doors, God, and platforms, God, for us Amen. to stand and to share, God, what we have been through, God, Amen. because there are some that Amen. do not have, God, the liberty to share, but you have given us a voice. You have given us a platform. Amen. And for that, we give you the Amen. glory. We give you the honor. We Amen. magnify Amen. your name because there is no Thank like you, unto Lord. you, God. You yes, are Lord. amazing, God. You're, you're, Thank you, you are Jesus. such a powerful God. Sometimes we don't Thank even you, have Lord. the words to say how great you are. We bless you, God. You. We bless you for this platform, God, that is healing people you, all over the world. We bless you for this Amen. amazing morning crew platform, God, for the woman Thank of you, God, God who has been obedient to you, God, and your voice Thank and you, stands Jesus. up and wakes up every day, God, to bring your people together in prayer. Thank the you, amazing God. testimonies that are coming from this. Thank we you, are God. grateful to who you are. We are grateful for your Thank faithfulness, you. for your love. Father, for always being there. We thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. We bless you, Father. We honor, we magnify your name, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. you. I love this song. Listen for one second. Listen. My God. You may not understand. Wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. We're going to start a worship session. <laughs> God bless you, bless Mother God. You. I'm honored to have you. Thank you so thank much. You. And um, I'll catch you on the yes, other side darling. on the phone. God All bless right. you. All right, bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. There were some nights that felt like they would last forever. But you kept me breathing. You were with me Whew. right there. Well, that's what it was. That's what it is. Praise God. I'm so proud of her. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just bless God for the woman of God? Thank God for her life. Thank God for her strength. Thank God for this awesome story. It was a liberating exercise for her, but I know because God showed me this day that it's also for more than one and more than 10 of us. More than 10 of us. So 
We thank God for her life. And I want to just encourage whomever it has blessed. Whomever it has blessed. As the dream, as the dream that God showed me, he showed me women spitting out fire balls. That's what the dream was. And um, I stand on that as his reminder. And I want to encourage you. Whatever you may need to do to liberate yourself in addition to your prayer life and your spiritual life with the Lord, do it so that you could be free indeed. One thing I always stand on and I believe is that God has used for me personally everything that looked like it was messy, jacked up, dangerous, bad, Turn it around for good. And he can even feed you from it. As you see what is happening now. I'm not sure if this is her first exclusive interview or whatever. But doors are opening for her. From what was meant to damage her forever. Praise God. From what was meant to damage her forever. So to God be the glory. Yeah, we are grateful to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a storyteller, for allowing God to put your pieces together. Praise God. So I have Ia on the phone with me. If you can turn your background noise down, if anybody has a question for her, a few more moments, you can type it and she'll see it. Or I'll say it to her and you can hear her. Do you have a website? Yes, I do. Um, the name of my website is um, yeah, I am dot com. I Y A I A M dot com. Yes. You have a lot of noise in your background. You can turn me down too, as well, please. Okay, sorry. Okay, there you go. Okay, so it's I Y A I A M dot com. Yes. That's her website. E I I M dot com. Praise and I'm God. Also, um, we have a Facebook page as well, The Girl Who Swallowed Fire. Okay. All right. And I know you're also on Instagram with that same name, right? The Girl Who Swallowed yes. Fire. Okay. Yes. Now, tell me a little bit. I didn't touch on this, but really quickly, what are you doing now um, career-wise or in relation to um, in relation to this testimony? Well, right now I'm planning um, to do some book tours. I've been doing some... Just few local um, stuff around here, but I'm planning on going to Sierra Leone at uh, the end of this month. And when I go, I'm going to start um, a ministry where and create a safe haven for people, again, who has been through um, what I've been through. Mm -hmm. I create a safe haven for them to be able to, to speak freely. And I'm also finishing my um, career in Christian counseling. I'm working on getting a license. I would like to open um, a counseling firm in Sierra Leone. Amen. Where again, I'll be awesome. able to counsel people and to, um, to help them break free from what they're going through. And we don't have a lot of Christian counsel counselors. We have psychologists, but not a Christian based. Yeah, and yeah. it's always good to help people and help them with the word. With the word. So that's also something I'm working on. And you, you are a, um, a licensed minister already, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. I am a licensed minister. Wow, praise God, praise God. So God has packaged you together, and as one of our favorite songs that we have here, put the pieces together and made you a storyteller. And I'm so proud of you. As I told you, you are an encouragement to me. And um, yeah, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys see the picture I have there on 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 the left, you see the scar. Um, I'm showing the picture from your website, the scar on her on her chest from the three heart surgery. Yes. So as I said, it's not something that she covers or hides. She's just a walking testimony, and what you see is what you get. I'm so proud of you. I don't know what else to say, but I'm so proud of you. Um, we love you. We're grateful um, for your time with us today and yesterday and going through the back and forth and the editing with me. I'm really grateful. God bless you. Um, Auntie Z is asking... Auntie Z is asking, she says, is there a way you can do a little write to just let people know what to expect in the book? Well, if they have the book, it's in the back of the book. And if they go to the website, it's there. A little write-up. Yes. Yeah, just simple uh -huh. to make things literal. Yeah, it's in the back of the book. Um, Auntie Z, I could probably take a picture of the back of the book for you and send it to you, Auntie Z. But it's there. 
Um, and it's also on the website, a little write-up. Is that correct? Am I correct? Yes, yes. It's on okay. the website. Okay. All right. Praise God. Atifa Dima says, a, a book begins with the first stroke of a pen, a walking testimony. That's right. God is yes. with us. Amen. So I'm glad. I want to encourage you all out there. Tell your testimony. Share your testimony. Um, do whatever you need to do to allow God to liberate you on all sides completely. Some of us still need, you know, to open some more chapters and some more stories. Somebody was asking, um, in Dear Paul, saying, what's the name of your book, Alfina? Well, uh, mine, or you can just go to my website, alfinabyfaith.com. Um, nothing similar to Yah's story, not quite yet, but, <laughs> but I'm so okay. proud of her. I'm so proud of you, girl. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Oh, I can't wait. God. I'm excited. I'm, it I'm is excited well. I can't wait to support the, the ministry counseling program that you're going to be doing in Sierra Leone. It's very important, and I can't wait to Amen. just put um put whatever support God can use me to do in that. I'm behind you. So God be the Amen. glory. Amen. So if there is no more questions, anything else you want to lastly say on the phone to the people watching or listening? I just want to say I love you all, and I really thank God for your life and I thank you once again for the opportunity mm -hmm. um, for me to share my story and what this morning crew is doing is a whole lot. You're such a life woman of God. I'm grateful for you. Praise I'm God. grateful for your strength and I'm so excited this year. We are just going to hit some territories that the enemy has locked open doors Amen. for each and every one of us. Amen. Blessings and increase in every area of our lives nothing missing and nothing broken that which the enemy thought he had stolen from us god is restoring it back to us a hundredfold a million fold let us be at peace and be encouraged and have a great and wonderful sunday god bless you all. amen one more question sorry dear how much sure. is the book the book is fifteen dollars fifteen dollars yes. yes and if you want Again, a signed copy they can contact you directly yes, they can they can just um send me an inbox and i would send them a signed copy okay. and i have um all the cash apps and everything in ways that we can do pay through you okay all right yeah. i i have a signed copy so i recommend you get a signed copy she, she doesn't charge extra for a signed copy and she'll mail it no, to you all, <laughs> so praise god so to god be the glory have a blessed weekend everybody i don't know what else i can say but just thank god and just i pray that this has been a healing opportunity for someone i know ei is open to talk to inbox yes. to call just reach out to her if yes. you feel like you need to um and more than anything Take it to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, we are on um, The God I Never Knew. So tomorrow we're starting on Chapter 3. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit as our friend. By the grace of God, as God instructs, our first Sundays are going to be Triumphant Testimony Sundays. Triumphant Testimony Sunday. So um, it's... It's going to be interesting because I think I know where, exactly where God is taking these first Sundays. So I'm excited. And yeah, you got to be the first person. Amen. <laughs> I'm so honored. God bless you all. I'm so congratulations. So Someone is saying, do you have it on audio? Are you working on audio book? Yes, I'm working on it. Okay. All right. Let me know when you I do have. so I can put it out there, please. Yes, ma'am, I will. All right, honey. Well, Thank love you. you. So the the video's out love there. It's public too. for you to share and reshare. And it'll be on YouTube by Tuesday, so it's all yours. Amen. Have and a blessed weekend. Share. Thank you so much. Bless You're welcome, you. my dear. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. All right, family. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all so much for hanging in there with this wonderful story. Thank you all for encouraging her. Thank you all for... Um, being encouraged by it, praying along, praying for her. And I really, more than anything else, pray that um, it is liberating. Can you buy some through my site? I can ask her. I'm sure she would not have a problem with letting me hold like 10 or 5 to sell through my site. That would that would be fine. I'll ask her and I'll, I'll make that announcement um, when she gives me the approval to do so. I don't see why that would be a problem. I don't have a problem with that. Um, please reach out to us with any help regarding mentorship in Africa. Okay, Miss Sylvia, I'll let her know as well. Praise God. So you guys have a wonderful day. It's been great. It's been better than I expected it to be. It, 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 you know, it's wonderful. And I'm so grateful for her strength and her openness because 
you know, many of us are not there yet. Many of us are not there yet to be that open, still free and healed and all that, but just not at that place of sharing to the extent that she has. So I'm so proud of her. And I'm hoping with all her traveling that she'll be able to grace us at a rise conference in October. Y'all pray for that. <laughs> so to God be the glory. I was going to, our status of the day, I was going to take from the worship song that we did earlier, which is no man can see the end of God's grace in my life. No man can see the end of God's grace. Praise God. No man can see the end of God's grace in my life. Hashtag morning crew. Praise God. That is what we just going to declare for today as we bless God. If you need to reach out to Ia in any other way and you can't get to her, please get to me. I'll connect you. Not a problem. Um, if you want to write your own book and you want to know where to start, get to me and I'll help you. Not a problem. I really will. Praise God. So have a blessed weekend. Let's listen to I See Grace by Solomon Lange. I really do believe that that's the, that's the mode that we're in. It, this, it, that woman is a woman of grace. I am a woman of grace. You are a woman of grace. You are a man of grace. Everybody gets a car. Have a blessed Sunday. I'll see you guys. Ah, to God be the glory. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Once again, here's a picture of her book. And, um, yeah. So, shalom. Um, before I do that, actually, before I go to the song, I have something I want to play for you guys. All right? I have something I want to play for you guys. You guys get ready. It's going to make you laugh. It's probably going to um, decrease some tension, right? It's probably going to decrease some tension. <laughs> it's probably going to decrease some tension, get you dancing and saying amen. Enjoy. God bless you, Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye. Positive radical shift, that's your portion, say Parabale, everything working for your good I go do anything, I'm waiting on you, I talk to you Where, 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 goodness and mercy follow you Positive radical shift, that's your portion, say Positive radical shift, that's your portion, say Parabale, everything working for your good I could do a new thing, I'm waiting on you, I'll talk to you
Everybody go shift, that's your portion, say. Oh,